that is so fetch. Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, welcome. My name is Kaya and today we are finally doing a five song deep dive into Iron Maiden. Mm, the day has come. You heard it right. Five songs, five different albums. Iron Maiden was one of our poll winners. And uh, here we are. Thank you so much to everybody who participated in the polls and who gave song suggestions. I picked five songs, all of your suggestions. It was super difficult to pick songs, but we made it, okay? Um, I ended up swapping one of the songs because uh, after a recent post, um, asking y'all what the best metal song ever recorded was. Many of you put The Trooper by um, Iron Maiden, which uh, I was like, all right, we gotta do that one. So we got five songs before we get into the video. If you wanna subscribe to the channel, please feel free to do so. We would love to have you on this metal journey. We are doing deep dives on new and old thrash metal bands, deathcore bands, death metal bands, anything, everything, full album reviews, singles, uh, yeah, pretty much tons of different videos are coming out. We're about to do metal unboxings. Check out my I Learn How to uh, Headbang video. I show off all these packages that we've received so far in the P.O. box. If you want to join our Discord at the Mosh Pit, there's an invite link in the description, as well as the P.O. box if you want to send something for the metal unboxing. Y'all know the deal. Uh, if we get to 10,000 subscribers, we're going to start a Twitch, and we're going to hang, we're going to live stream, we're going to eventually play some video games once I figure out the setup, uh, and we're going to do tons of metal, but we have to get to 10,000 subscribers. Right now, we are just under 7,200 as far as right now me recording this video, okay? We're getting close, but we're not there yet. So, that's all I have to say for the intro. Let's go ahead and get into Iron Maiden. Ooh. Got like medieval guitar already or something. Pink Floydy story vibes. Oh, wow. Change up. Immediate first impressions, super catchy. I'm getting definitely Black Sabbath and like the vocalist for Journey, like him holding out that note with like a little bit of like treble or whatever, super good. And then the like kind of medieval guitar tone thing that he was doing, melody, kind of reminded me of um, obviously medieval music, but like the end of Heaven and Hell by Black Sabbath, how they did sort of like a little medieval thing. And what a change going into this section. Whoa. Wow. Wow. 
Wow. Wow. Where are we going with this? I really want them to like drop the beat. Ooh. Oh. Oh. That resolve. Ba -na 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 -na. Such a beautiful note to like resolve on in that little section oh my gosh it's like i oh i'm getting chills i get like tingly when like there's like really these hopeful notes i don't know it's like something that's like hopeful and like happy oh this is like mm, this is like nothing we've heard of really there's like there's i have no words okay oh Wow. Wow. Dope track. Oh. Nice fill. This would be fire live. Fire. Wow. Feeling I'm going to cry. I just need a break. I need a second. This is the first song. Ugh. I mean, it's like the same sort of era. It's like we're in the same pocket as like late 
I guess, like, yeah, late, like, Black Sabbath, and, like, right when Megadeth is, like, making the moves. Um, man. They've got the same sort of, like, layout, I guess you could say, as Megadeth, in terms of, like, all these different transitions of chapters and just the grit, you know? It's kind of that, like, 80s metal grit, you know? Um... But they're very unique in their sound. Like, it's not as, like, punchy, punchy, punchy in your face, like, as Megadeth in a good way. It's a little bit more, like, refined and, like, the vocalist. I don't know. He's serving. And it's just, mm, it's clean. It's really clean. And I have to turn off Discord. Yo. You need to stop. I love y'all so much, but you're this too much. It's too much. Crescendo ending. Let me just tell you, live, okay, Discord, you're finally getting shut off on my phone. I'm sorry, I love you so much, but you're, you're really having a great time in there, and I'm trying to fail. Um, yo, live, that would be sick nasty like actually sick nasty sorry let me just turn on turn off my there we go well just, okay perfect okay uh live yeah yeah i think that's what he was singing mm, that would be fire live and then they go into this like kind of little guitar thing with this crescendo ending dude this would be a great show ender like something to like cap the show <sighs> okay yeah fire track there are so many things it was like every single bit of the song was like catchy and rememberable and like journey style vocalist beautiful belty vocals you know it had like a little bit of grit but it just was it had that sort of like kind of clean if if that sounds if that's like the right way to say it i feel like the vocalist for journey had very clean vocals and very very belty like that dude is talented crazy talented and i feel like the iron maiden singer has that sort of vocal capability or at least is what i can tell um, if you disagree, let me know, obviously. Hallowed Be Thy Name, track A on the number of the bees. Whoa, ha. Look at this. Okay, add, get the frick out of the way. Look at this album cover, though. That is so sick nasty with this, like, dude that's got this, like, spear through him. Do we know who that dude is? All this fire... Oh, the font looks dope. What's on me? Is that a bug? No. Okay, great. Uh, this song... Let's see. This song is the somber reflections of a prisoner on the day his death sentence is to be carried out. Ooh. 
The listener is given no context regarding the prisoner's crime. Could be he the narrator? Could he be the narrator from several of the tracks on Killers? Ooh, interesting. But is instead treated to an introspective look at the meaning of life. The title of the song, Hallowed Be Thy Name, comes from the Lord's Prayer. Exact text of the prayer varies by denomination. It goes, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed, by, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Okay. The prisoner initially confronts his fear and dread at the prospect of of his death by hanging but remembers his beliefs at first he scorns the idea of god then he takes comfort in the idea of a higher power taking him in upon death and ends up with a realization that life on earth isn't really important several of this song's lines were lifted from british prog band brecket's 1974 track life's shadow by steve harris oh interesting the iron maiden bassist saw Bre beckett excuse me perform in 1973 and their debut LP was one of his favorite albums when it was first released. He initially used the lyrics as a placeholder and did not have time to change them before a number of the beasts was released. Big oof. Oh, oh, oh. oh that's a big no-no, honey. After Peck Hits retired band manager Barry McKay filed a lawsuit of a hundred thousand pounds roughly a hundred and thirty eight thousand american u.s dollars was paid by iron maiden out of court to life's shadow songwriters brian quinn and robert barton this song quickly became one of iron maiden's most acclaimed works with several bands recording covers of it this song may have helped inspire metallica's similarly themed ride the lightning Wow, it's all interconnected. This is what we have discovered on this battle journey. Everything is interconnected. Everything is like connected somehow. Dude, I cannot believe that you actually stole lyrics from a different dude's. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I could totally see just having placeholders being like, I really like this dude's record, putting them in there and then being oh my gosh not even remembering you just get so comfortable with the lyrics and then you go to the studio you got the pressure of like recording and you're signed to a label and you're performing and you've got all these fans and you don't even think about those things because it's just like a part of you and a part of the song and the whole process oh my gosh that must have been like a oh big oof dude big oof at least like beckett was like cool about it because he could have been a total douche and been like, yo, you gotta change, like, the lyrics, like, you can't use my lyrics, you know? I don't know if he did make, I, I guess he didn't, you know? It's good that they, I mean, he, Iron Maiden had to compensate him because they did steal his song, so. Somebody please tell me I'm dreaming. Now, in this dire situation, the prisoner wishes this terrible experience is just a nightmare. Somebody cries from the cell, God be with you. If there's a God, why has he let me go? Because you did something naughty, boy. That's why. Narrator is questioning his belief in God. The sign more than any other leads one to think that the narrator does not believe his execution is just and is questioning why God has allowed him to die. There's one line in it that says, if there's a God, then why does he let me die? It's just conflicting ideas in your mind, I suppose. Well, I mean, I never want to be in that position, Steve Harris said. Ah, don't either. Dang, Bubba! Alright, alright. So the next one we're going to listen to is called The Trooper from their 1983 album, Peace of Mind. Now, we were going to do Revelations, because that got a ton of votes prior to me asking y'all about the best metal song ever recorded and then so many of y'all said tons of different songs tons of different bands but the trooper got a lot and i just got curious so we're gonna do the trooper half a league half a league half a league award all in the valley of death Rode the 600 for the light brigade, charged for the guns he said into the valley of death. Rode the 600. Oh. 
Oh yeah, I forget that they're British, right? They are British. I'm almost certain they're British. They look so British. I'm getting like uh, mega death vibes, definite mega death vibes. Hey. Wow. Nice. Ah. Mm. Oh, that horse just took an L. pants oh my gosh did you see those pants they're so colorful i love this riff -na 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 -na. i love the like higher and lower octaves that they're playing Love the O's. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Delicious solo. Oh my gosh. The O's are so catchy. Oh, super catchy. Their outfits are like, I love it. I think this is actually filmed like from the 80s, I would assume. And like, they're both, there's, they're wearing funny pants and they've got like, <laughs> they, I love it. It's definitely reminding me of, um, Oh, there was a Megadeth music video that we watched. I think it was like the first one that we watched. And it, it reminds me of the same thing. Just like in this huge kind of like room, just performing. Uh, I love it. I love it. This solo too was really, really good. Ooh. 
little it's meaty, dude. That's it? That's the whole song? Too short. Way too short. It's almost four and a half minutes long and I feel like we just listened to like two minutes. That's such a short song. Oh my gosh. And you don't have any comments on this, do you? Oh no, you do. This is music. Ugh. My brother and I played this at my uncle's funeral. The people were mad, but a week before he died, he told us to play The Trooper because it's his favorite song, and he wants to jam for the last time. Oh, dude. Okay, this begs the question. At your funeral, what song would you want to be played? I think that... Eddie the Banish! No, we're not gonna talk about Eddie, okay? We're not gonna talk about Eddie. <sighs> we're not gonna talk about Stranger Things, and we're not gonna talk about Eddie, okay? I haven't recovered. Uh, no matter what style of music you prefer, this is a piece of art. It doesn't matter if you prefer Black Thrash, Doom, Heavy, or Death. We all love Iron Maiden. Uh, the pinnacle of heavy metal. I wish the young generations could experience all these incredible bands live like we did. Ugh, I know. So I think about that often. Like, one of the first drummers I had in my band, oh, ages ago, when I first started my band at, like, 17 or 18, there was a drummer in my band who had a girlfriend at the time, and the only music that she would ever listen to was like on the radio top 100 and nothing literally nothing prior and i was like you're kidding me right like literally nothing from like i don't know 2000 or like before 2000 literally nothing from the 70s like nothing like you need to be like viciously shaken and punched in the face. Honestly, honestly, I would do it for you because that's just a sin. The greatest sin in the world is not listening to more music from before 2000. You heard it here first. What the heck are we listening to? The Trooper. Uh, I'm Nada. Frustrated me to no end hearing that. How can you just be a human being and not listen to anything prior? Only listen to top the top radio very 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 rarely are there ever good songs that like rock the world that are on the top radio right now they're all the same piece of garbage trash rant over I'm sorry I could go on forever <laughs> the trooper <laughs> segue Tells the feudal heroism of a British soldier during the Charge of the Light Brigade, a light infantry maneuver during the battle. Look, the page is responsive. It's responsive! Okay. Oh my god, my computer is having a hard time. During the Battle of Bala ba Balaclava, 1854, that was famously retold in 10... Tennyson's poem. Um, the poem was written six weeks after the event, reaching the British troops still fighting in the Crimean War, 1853 to 1856, where it became an inspiring tribute. The song was a second single released from Peace of Mind, and at the time was famous for its MTV band music video, which depicted scenes from the 1936 Errol Flynn movie in which actual horses died? The song itself has since inspired Iron Maiden's own beer trooper. I was wondering because that looked like real horses. I mean, obviously, but like getting blown up. Okay, do you remember that scene, side note, in Game of Thrones? In season, I think it was season five, the Battle of the Bastards with all of the horses and like the body, the mountain of bodies. Spoiler alert, if you haven't seen Game of Thrones now, honestly, congratulations, because it ended so horribly. And the Eddie from the single cover is even stamped on the arm of the song's composer, Steve 
Paris. Ugh. Dang. Uh, dang, Bubba. 1936 Errol Flynn movie. Why would you depict actual horses dying? I mean, I get it. It's the 30s, different time, you know, but like why? Why? The mighty roar of the Russian guns. Ugh, my mom is calling me. The mighty roar of the Russian guns, and as we race towards the human wall, the screams of pain as my comrades fall, we hurtle bodies that lay on the ground. In order to get the enemy, they must jump and step over the dead bodies of their comrades and the enemies that they have killed. I just can't even imagine going to war, dude. Like, honestly, our, our troops always support our troops. <sighs> Protagonist sees a Russian soldier take aim at him, but he is too late to react. He can see the soldier pull the trigger and then feels the impact of the shot. These O's were like so catchy. Oh yeah, I'm gonna have to listen to the trooper some more because I mean, if I'm being honest, I haven't recovered from Hollowed by that name, okay? Hollowed by that name grabbed me a little bit more than the trooper. But, um, y'all said it was your favorite, so I just, I think I just need to listen to it more, and, like, preferably in a different setting, you know? I mentioned driving in my car and banging out music from my stereo, and that's, like, oh, the best setting. But then also, like, do you listen to music when you shower? Because I do. That's also really good, and, like, getting all dolled up with my makeup and my lotions and my hair. Mmm! That's also the other vibe. Sorry. I know. I know. <sighs> the trooper. I think you're still very good. And I definitely can see how you would be one of the best songs recorded. But I don't know. Like Black Sabbath's got... Black Sabbath, Heaven and Hell, and War Pigs has me by the strings. Okay. Mm. Hollow by thy name, though. That was a goodie. Okay. So, we did. 1982. We did 1983. Dang, they are just pumping out music just like frickin' Black Sabbath. So this is now their, what, third record? We have 1984, Power Slave, and it's the title track <laughs> called Power Slave. Ooh, look at this Egyptian looking thing. Whoa. Did he wear like a huge Egyptian mask for this like performance? Oh my gosh, he did. I want to listen to the actual recording though. Ooh, I got some heartbeats. Ooh. Oh. Oh. Wow. 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 Ch 
chuggy guitar. Super chuggy, chuggy guitar during these verses. A lot of like, a lot more vocal stuff going on in this, like background vocal stuff. Ah, vocal layers in this section. Really nice. I really like the vibe of their songs. Like this one is giving me the same vibes as like Hollowed by Thy Name. It's kind of like storytelling. Beautiful reverb in this one too. It is the remastered version. I know. I'm not cheating you. But some of these records, you know, they're old. I mean, I'm, I'm all about the original sound, but I also very much appreciate a good remaster version. So this one's got some nice juicy reverb to it. I'm curious to read about what this song is about and how it connects to like what this album cover is since it's like Egyptian. Oh. Rig me the blood. Oh. Wow. This transition to The bass in this section. Wow. Wow. Oh. Fire bridge. Yep, builds it up. Nice. I wanted them to go faster. Wow. No, okay, you pause, okay? You can't, you can't just do that, okay? 
Like, you just, you can't. Beautiful. Like, amazing, because they build it up. They give you this freaking amazing bridge that's just, oh, slow, juicy. Then they give you this banging solo. And then they kind of leave you, like, hanging just a little bit in this section. They kind of, like, pull it back just a little bit before they give you this more gritty mwah, solo. To the point where you forget, at least in my opinion, I forgot that there was the chuggy, the chugginess. So for them to just, mmm, wow, give you those, I don't know, is it the tom, is it the snare, I don't know. They give you these delicious bongo style drum fills several times and they go right into this chuggy. You forget all about it so it just slaps you in the face. You gotta warn a girl first, okay? You can't just like whip it out like and just be like, here you go. God. Ooh. Oh, man. Dang. Oh, you know, this ending is actually like sick, nasty. Because, like, live, I could see them holding it out similar to how they're doing in this record, to where they're holding it, holding it, holding it, and then they just slap you with this banger of a next song. They, I, they, they gotta have another one that starts with like super high paced, you know? Ooh. And then that like really sets the tone. This could be a good opener too. Maybe. I don't know. I'm overwhelmed. Honestly, like that bridge and that solo is just like. Mm. I'm not crazy about the chorus. I'm gonna be honest, I'm not crazy about the chorus. But I do like the vocal melodies. I think it's just a personal preference. I also think I need to like listen to it more. Um, but the chorus is not what grabbed me. I do like the power slave part. It was that bridge. I mean, I already told you what grabbed me in this song. So definitely, I really like this song. But that was the strongest part for me. And I really liked the ending. And they didn't just, like, do one simple crescendo. They kind of unfolded the song and, like, eased the way into it before they did the final crescendo. So there were some really nice moving parts. This is a very technical band for the 80s. Um, same, uh, like I mentioned, same sort of technical vibes that I got with um, Megadeth. A lot of layers. They really thought about each section. There's tons of different sections, a lot of movement, a lot of different parts, layers. It's like an onion. Black Shrek said it's like an onion, you know? Have you ever bitten into like a raw onion? <laughs> Just done that. I've never done it and I would only do it 
if y'all really wanted me to for some reason if we needed to have that on the channel because I love you guys that much, okay? That is the only reason you would ever get me to bite into a raw onion. I also really like the fact that Iron Maiden has... Would it be weird to say they're kind of like a cousin band to Megadeth? Because they have, like, the skull-like dude, you know? They also have, like, a skull mascot on their, in their band, you know, on all their album covers and stuff like that. Is it weird to say that they would be kind of like a cousin band? Oh yeah, this is The Mummy. Title track from Power Slave details the account of a power mad pharaoh who is on his deathbed. Interesting concept. Bruce Dickinson always performs the song wearing a ritual mask. That's what he was wearing. If y'all want me to watch a live performance of Iron Maiden on this channel, just let me know, because, like, that sounds dope, and I saw from a thumbnail of another video that that was there. No matter if it isn't Egyptian, after all, the tour artwork for the 2016 tour referenced this status with Mayan headgear. Ooh, so it's kind of just, like, tribal... Um, or I guess like empire, like, you know, Egyptian, Egyptian empire, is that correct? You know, big statue, big things, big pyramids. And the Mayans also had a big thing. So they sacrificed a lot of people and it was pyramid shaped. That's all the notes you have. Aces high. Flash the blade. The duelist. Steve Harris is the bass player. Bruce Dickinson. So who's like the main writer? Bruce. He does, so the singer is a main writer. Or do they all write? EMI group. Limited. Nice. All right. All right. When I was living this life, fear was my game. People would worship and fall, drop to their knees. So bring me the blood and red wine for the one to succeed me, for he is a man and a god, and he will die too. The first line may reference the way monotheistic Abrahamic faith replaced the, oh my god, these words, polytheism of the Egyptians and other groups in Egypt and that part of the world in general. Jesus, the Messiah of the Christian faith and a prophet in Islam, was said to have turned water into wine out of bedding. Speaker's successor will think that he is immortal as well. He will meet the same fate as the speaker. Death. Okay, but like this photo? Fire. I just love how like colorful and like cartoony it is, but not in a cheesy way. You know, it's just, uh, it's dope. It's fire. It's a fireball sandwich. The next one is also a title track. So the rest of these are title tracks, okay? So, because apparently Iron Maiden knows how to make really, really strong title track songs. And then they're like, that's a banger. Let's name our album that. So this one is called Seventh son of a seventh son and it's from the album of the same title from 1988. Ooh. Already this album cover looks dope. Wow. Was that choir? Wow. Ooh. 
choir, dude. I can tell that this is like it's got keys and it's got choir I don't know if it's real choir it could just be like synth choir and I don't know if they had keys on any of the other songs that we listened to or any of the other songs on the records but this is the one where I, I noticed the keys it's like a synth Very catchy melody. Ooh. I also really like that the guitar is following the vocals. Oh, I like that it's following that. I really liked the this chorus is very simple. It also seems like one, it would be a tongue twister. And I don't know about you, but I have a weird thing about like asses. I do. It's kind of like one of my weird things. Seventh son of a seventh son. Like I feel like ugh, ugh, way too many asses. But, like, I like the simplicity of it. And, yeah, very catchy. And I also feel like the O's that he's singing would be, like, super fun to sing and just, like, belt out live and follow him with it. Yeah, this would be so fun. Uh, oh, I want him to repeat it. But this, like, gives room for, like, if he does it, it gives room for the crowd to do it and follow. Because it's like, I really want him to repeat it. It's, like, almost instinctual for him to repeat it. So I guess they're just leaving it open just to, I don't know, maybe have the choir do it or just to, like, have the guitar have a, a moment. Oh. 
no, no, no. 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 Wow. I'm like gonna cry. I'm actually gonna cry. This is beautiful. This is so pretty. Dude, uh. this would be so fire live. Are you kidding me? Uh. Wow. Wow! Holy crap! What a way to map, like, oh my gosh, what a way to produce that. And layer that. Holy cow, y'all don't understand. Oh, you do. But, y'all, okay, beautiful layer, the choir, like, as soon as the choir comes in, dun dun dun, it's just perfect layer. And they pan the echo all the way down here. So you hear it first here, echo here. Holy cow. Oh my gosh. I think that's like the first time. Maybe not, but I can't recall another time that an artist has had their echo panned to the other side and then immediately going over here. Like that's just fire, fire. This whole section is fire. God. getting faster. Feels like it. Oh, I'm ready for them to build it up. I'm ready. Nice. We're so going to battle in this song, dude. I hope y'all are prepared. Yep, definitely getting faster. It's like Game of Thrones meets like metal. Daenerys on a dragon going to properly kill Cersei. Nice. Oh yeah. Wow. I'm telling you, what? Wow. Honestly rude. Honestly so rude. I am not a fan, okay? Y'all built it up so beautifully. <sighs> okay. I'm praying that the section is going to ball out, but I'm disappointed. I'm honestly disappointed. I wanted it to be 
I wanted it to be a bit bigger, but they, of course, like, build it up this way, and then they take it, like, 90 degrees. Just like that one song. What was it? Troops? I think it was The Trooper. Ooh! Wow! Ooh! Funky! Well, that bass is putting in some work, dude. I like this section. Nice. Whoa. Nice. Wow. The sin? minutes long oh my gosh I'm just I need to compose my thoughts oh. does anybody else feel like the keys were just a little out of place or is that just me tripping I guess for me it's like I'm just not used to keys really being in heavy metal um not that it sounded bad by any means, but it just sounded a little out of place. Um, but this is also like, keep in mind the era where big 80 synth were like huge in pop. I mean, you had like New Order and Depeche Mode making waves with the, with the synthy <laughs> keys, um, just to name a few bands. So. I do like that they incorporated it and I like that they have that element because it's almost like they're incorporating that sort of like synthy pop key sound into their like classic heavy metal 80s loud sound but it's really the choir I mean I'm a sucker for choir so I don't know if it's a real one or if it's like a synth choir uh, but what I do hope is that they had an actual choir for at least one of their live performances. They had to. And if they have, let me know. And we'll put that on the channel because honestly, I'm a sucker for good choir. Yeah, and it's kind of cool that they have one because I'm, I know they're not like the only heavy metal band that had that, but we've listened to a lot of Lorna Shore on this channel. They're about to release a new record in October, so we've listened to a lot. Um, and they have choir. They have a very big sound. And this is kind of reminding me of that. Um, obviously not the same music, or really the same metal genre, um, 
you know, one is obviously more modern, um, and the other is not. So, I digress. Is this 98? I thought this was 80s. Okay, yeah, it is 80s. I'm just tripping. Yeah, late 80s. And also, there was a couple, there was a section in there during that, like, um, bridge where they brought it down that definitely gave me some death vibes um and this was released in 88 death was starting to release music at this time so it was kind of giving me those vibes it's so interesting to understand how all these things are like laying out in the timeline <laughs> the birth of the prophecy uh, prophesied one the chosen one, the seventh son of the seventh son. His family are all watching him to see what path he chooses in life. This song and album in general was influenced by the book Seventh Son, book one of the tales of Alvin Maker by Orson Scott Card. It's a fantasy series set in America in the late 18th slash early 19th century. A few chapters into the book, there's a pregnant mother about to give birth to her seventh son. Her husband is also a seventh son. However, a force in the world does not want this boy to be born because of how much power he could have. Ooh. Is it almost like because he's, um, this is just a theory, but 777 seven, seven is considered to be like God's number, a very powerful, like three marker number. Um, so maybe in the book it's like father is a seventh son the son is a seventh son of that seventh son so that unlocks power but maybe his power is officially unlocked when he turns seven Ooh, theory the plot thickens what have the artists said about the song it could be four or five songs there are so many different parts in it i didn't realize it was as long as it was until afterwards it felt like six to seven minutes, it ended up being ten. Yeah, very long song, but it doesn't feel like it at all. When Steve played me Seventh Son, I was in Seventh Heaven. Wow, something to really get your teeth into. Yeah, a lot of moving parts. Super layered like a cake. Then they watch the progress he makes, the good and the evil. Which path will he take? Both of them trying to manipulate. The use of his powers before it's too late. Oh. Both the good and the evil sides, God and the devil himself, are trying to get the seventh son of a seventh son on their side since he could greatly be of help to their causes. Both just need to get to him before the other side does, for his powers are soaring to the point they can't be controlled anymore, causing the risk that they will eventually consume the seventh son of a seventh son. Ooh, this reminds me of The Stand by Stephen King. Have you read that book? She's a thicky, okay? She's like almost 1,200 pages. I have the hard copy, and that thing is a book stop in itself. But, yeah, it reminds me, because it's, it's a book about the end of the world and, like, God and the devil. We have one more. The next song is called Fear of the Dark. And it's by this, the album of the same title from 1992. So now we're in the early 90s. And we've really gone through like a whole decade of music. What is this called again? I like just said the title, Fear of the Dark. My goodness, Kaya. I am also afraid of the dark. So Iron Maiden, you better make a decent song. Another seven minute track. Y'all weren't playing. Ooh. Ooh, slowing it down a little. Jazzy vibes. I'm making love music. Mm. Wow. 
Pink Floyd vibes. The way he's like accenting, I think Pink Floyd is from, they're not from the U.S., but it's, it's giving me Pink Floyd vibes in terms of like vocals. can hear is the bass. The bass is being shown a really good time during the second the thang, the thang, the thang, thang. <laughs> really catchy chorus. The beginning was so beautiful. And then going into this slapping you across the face, backhanded slap too. This fear of the dog. And the beautiful riff. the bass, dude. Wow. Wow, changed what the key? Wow, another layer of onion. Come on, give it to me. Yep, there you go. 
My favorite riff, dude. Wow. Oh. I just well, that lyric kind of reminds me of Green Day. Wow, what is that song? I don't know. It's the one where he's like talking about going walking alone. I walk this road alone. Something like that. It kind of like reminds me lyric wise. I'm not, I will say this, okay? The lyrics, not a huge fan of, but that doesn't really matter considering the fact that the instrumentation of this entire song is bat crap crazy. Bat crap crazy, okay? Uh, it's fire. This whole instrument, everything about it, they, like, I love that they, like, brought it back down to how they started the track, so if you were listening to it from front to back and you wanted to, like, re-listen to it, it would basically start the same, which I think is just, I love elements like that in, in music. Um, but see it's like catchy that's the thing it's like I can say oh the lyrics are a little corny they don't really like match but it's still stuck in your head and I still am afraid of the dark so you know who's the real cheese ball here the title track from Iron Maiden's last album with lead singer Bruce Dickinson before his seven year departure from the band why did he depart tell me please Fear of the Dark can be straightforwardly interpreted, straightforwardly interpreted, I didn't even know that that was a word, as a song about nyctophobia, nyctophobia, and by extension, whatever hides in darkness. Oh, Fear of the Dark. Wow, it's called nyctophobia. You learn something new every day. The dark can also be more broadly interpreted as anything unknown or unfamiliar to someone that inspires in them fear and anxiety. Yep. Steve Harris, who wrote it, is really afraid of the dark. Wow, uh, me too. This is the story of a man who walks in a park at night and as it's getting darker, he sees all sorts of worrying things. He becomes totally paranoid because his imagination is working overtime. It's a great track. It is a really good track and this picture is fire dope nasty. The song also sees more crowd participation than most other Iron Maiden songs. Ooh, during live concerts, fans and spectators will often sing along to the guitar intro as well as the instrumental ear interlude. Yeah, and I also feel like the chorus is very much something that's easy to sing along to as you're like thrashing and moving about. But I feel like easy to sing along to in terms of like anybody that goes to an Iron Maiden song or listens to Iron Maiden old or young or whatever can sing it. Fear of the dark. Yeah. Fire instrumental in the beginning and the end. About being scared, not really knowing of what. Everybody has a secret fear of something. They just don't always know what it is until it's too late. I also really think this album cover is 
fire. And I love that this, like, they always have such creative ways of getting the skull in, like, their, their mascot in the thing. Whether it's, like, like, the face in the Egyptian pyramid, or this dude coming out of the tree. Super sick. Super sick. Um, oh, this one was written by Steve Harris. So, were Bruce and Steve the main writers? And I'm guessing the drummer and the guitarists just kind of did their own thing. Keyboard, Michael Kinev. So, did they add the keys later? I'm assuming towards, like, late 80s. Was the, like, 88 record the first record that they had keys on? Um, or not? Did they always have a keyboardist? Um... Melvin Grant is their illustrator. Nice. Songs that sample Fear of the Dark, Best Rapper Alive by Lil Wayne. You would. You would. I bet that song came out, like, in the early 2000s, too. Before Kanye West started rocking, like, metal tees, you know? <sighs> so let's like let's talk let's break it down final thoughts um I will say that this band oh my gosh taking off my headphones is like the hardest part of doing these videos um <coughs> I need water first but what do we think about Iron Maiden? What are your thoughts on Iron Maiden in terms of like thrash daddies? You know? They want over Judas Priest, but a lot of y'all have been wanting Judas Priest on the channel, which of course we're going to do. Don't worry. Um, we're gonna there's so much metal that's coming here it takes me a minute to do these videos but it's only because i like to do these longer videos so we can deep dive and um also i just want it to be perfect for y'all so we will do judas priest iron maiden is very very unique in their style like i mentioned in the video i'm getting singer from journey the vocal capabilities that he has in the terms of his, like, nice, beautiful belts are, are really, really nice. And I'm also getting a little bit of, like, Pink Floyd in terms of their storytelling and some of the way that they, especially, like, Fear of the Dark. There was another one, too, that we listened to where just the way he was accenting and the, and the way that it started and everything seemed very storytelling, you know, like, um, brick in the wall sort of thing. Um, and then, of course, Megadeth. I mean, it's the same sort of era. And they've got the same sort of, like, um, excuse me, like, mascot type thing. Um, and I don't know. I feel like where Megadeth talked more about aliens and murder... I'm trying to figure out, like, what the theme of Iron Maiden was. Because they talked more about, like, God and the devil. And they talked about, um, a little bit about war, right? Fear of the dark, fear of the unknown. Um, I don't know. Just very unique sound. And I feel like they're almost in, like, some sort of, like, league of their own. It's, it feels like a different sound than what we've had on this channel um and I really really like it I can't decide which one's my favorite song what I will say and y'all aren't are gonna disagree with me but I don't think like I think out of these five like the trooper I think is like the weakest one next to in my personal opinion don't shank me okay if you disagree please let me know um, see, I think, and I'm just going to re-listen to these, obviously, but First Impressions, Hollowed by Thy Name, dope track. Seventh Sun and Fear of the Dark, beautiful instrumentation, especially the instrumental for Seventh Sun. 
beautiful. And I think that Power Slave is also really great instrumentational wise, but I'm just not super crazy about the chorus. I feel like it's a little lackluster. The Trooper, I'm just going to give it more of a listen. Um, cause honestly, like there's so much to unpack here with just these five songs. I mean, Iron Maiden really went above and beyond. And y'all, we listened to 10 years of, of music from them and they just layered it out. I mean, there is just so much to unpack. They have so many transitions and everybody was doing their part and working. And what I really, really love about their songs is there is so much that you can cling to in terms of catchiness, whether it be guitar riffs or the vocals and the vocal melodies, tons of different moving parts. And it's just, it almost feels more layered and technical than even some of the stuff that Megadeth had. Um, but maybe not. I don't know. Uh, I'm very impressed with this band and I'm super intrigued to hear more. So if y'all want to see more Iron Maiden on this channel, let me know down below. Um, typically we do these five song discography dives and then we go into an album. So we have several uh, bands that are on the docket for this month. But we will eventually get to Iron Maiden. So tell me what record you would like to see a full album deep dive. Um, if you want to see some shorter vids. Um, maybe you're not a huge fan of the longer sit downs. And you want to see something shorter. We could definitely do, you know, um, watching a live performance or something like that. Y'all just let me know. Because um, I want to make content for y'all. So I'm here to provide. Um, that's what I got. So thank you so much for watching and spending time with me today. I really genuinely appreciate it. Uh, we made it through Iron Maiden, y'all. This is a wild time. <laughs> if you want to subscribe to the channel, please feel free to do so. You do not have to, but I do post weekly videos and we have a blast on this channel, okay? And there is so much in store and I am working so hard on this channel, like every single day to provide good content for y'all and just like more exciting things. So, you know, don't believe me, just watch. Um, join the Discord, invite link down below. Send stuff to the PO box. It's down in the description if you want something featured in the metal unboxing. We're just gonna be taking a close look at horror novels, CDs, metal t-shirts. We're going all out. I'm currently making the box right now for the video, which is really exciting. So yeah, wherever you are and whenever you are watching this, thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. I hope that you are having a good morning, afternoon, evening, night, wherever you are. I'll see you soon. Bye.